will, go ahead and turn in your Bibles tonight to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Our springboard scripture we're going to start out with tonight. And before we move into this sixth part of sanctification, out of the wilderness and into the land of promise. And the reason we named it that, that name of that message is because when you begin to walk in sanctification, you're coming out of a wilderness. The church as a whole tonight is in the wilderness. They do not understand sanctification. They do not know that they have to keep their faith in the cross to keep going. They, they fall into psychology very easy. They fall into witchcraft and all sorts of things, yet they remain faithful to the house of God and in their attendance, their giving, and, and all the events and programs, but they do not understand sanctification. They do not understand the message of the cross. Therefore, they cannot live for God. They don't know how. They do not know how, and they get angry when you begin to share the narrowness of this gospel, and it is narrow. The way we share the word here at Crossway Church is it's always the gospel, and it seems like it's just getting more and more narrow, like them folks at Crossway Church just trying to prove how narrow it is. No, that's God trying to bless you. That's God trying to equip you and let you know it's only one way, but in that one way is everything you'll ever need and beyond that. In that one way, it's not, it's, it is a narrow way, but it is, it has got the fullness of all God has. And it's all in that narrow way, and it's nowhere else. And the church really hates that. They really do, they hate that, to think it's that narrow. And it's not getting more narrower, just in our understanding. But we want to read this tonight, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, not a denomination, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. Do you see the abounding of more and more is found when God is pleased, and he's pleased when you know how to walk. And then he begins to explain, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. That tells me if we're going to walk and please God, it's going to be by some commandments given. Kindergarten, for this is the will of God, specifically your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. See, sanctification right here, simply put, abstains from the world. And that only happens through faith in the cross, a daily cross, a daily, a, a daily denial of myself and a taking up of my cross daily, understanding and reckoning. That I am dead to sin, reckoning myself dead to sin, and alive unto God. Every single day, all day long, bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. All day, every day. It's not a chore. It's not a hard job. It's a blessing. We look at it the wrong way. You mean I got to do that all day? No, I, you mean we get to do that all day. We get to follow Christ. We get to take up a cross. My Lord, we got to stop looking at it like, man, it's hard. man. It's just, no, the way of the sinner is hard. The way of the cross is easy because he's got the yoke. He's got the burden. His yoke is light. His burden is easy. We need to look at what we're getting for walking in it, not how no, we're looking at it wrong too much. And that's the way Christians look at it when they hear us preaching this gospel. That's just too narrow. God ain't just working in that. I got news for you. It's all he's working in. You don't like it, you miss out. But outside of this process is the devil. Outside of this process is the devil and his will. The will of God is our sanctification. The will of the devil is to, for us to avoid the will of God, our sanctification. So most of the church tonight sits in the will of the devil because they can't even explain sanctification. And I know you don't have to be able to explain it to live it, but they're not living it because when you start talking about the cross, they turn away from you. And without a cross, there is no sanctification. Without the blood, there is no sanctification. We'll see it tonight even more clearly than ever before. Verse 4, that every one of you should know how. Every one of you should know how. Every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. 
not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. See, that's, the, that's contrary there. Because we know God, we're being sanctified if we're walking with our faith in the knowledge of God. Now, verse 6 says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, even those of us who try it, as we also have forewarned you. And that proves it right there. Paul wouldn't be, by the Holy Ghost, bringing a warning to God's people if it weren't possible for the Lord to show up and avenge some things. And t you and testify. For God, here comes the fruit of sanctification. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Holiness is the fruit of sanctification. Holiness is the fruit of our faith. Holiness is the fruit of our faith in the cross. Romans 6 teaches that. This morning on the way to work, dark and early, the Lord began to minister to me and reveal to me that holiness is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living in us if we surrender to Him and we have our faith in the cross, which is a surrendering to the Lord, then He is producing fruit in us, and we surrender and bear the fruit He's producing. Amen. Amen. You understand that? So let me say it again. The Lord was teaching me this morning that holiness is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Gentleness, meekness, temperance, self-control, faith. When those things are being manifest in our lives through faith in the cross, that is holiness. The fruit of the Spirit. Let me put it the right way. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the holiness of God being manifest. It's not just fruit of the Spirit, and we quote it off what it is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is the holiness God's looking for because our fruit is pitiful. His fruit, the book of Proverbs says, my fruit is better than choice silver and fine gold. God says, my fruit is better than yours. My fruit so we, if we walk in the right place, our faith in the right object, what Christ did at Calvary, that fruit is bare, that fruit the Holy Spirit is producing in us. All we do is surrender daily by taking up our cross, realizing I don't have to have the last word, I don't have to argue, gripe, and complain. I'm, my life's not my own. Jesus bought me at the cross. I belong to Him. Amen. And I'm to please him. I'm to learn how to walk that pleases God, not the nation, not the government. I'll obey the laws because the God tells me to. But my number one desire is to please God, and it's only done by faith. And faith only comes by hearing the word. And the word of God that's going to do anything for me is a sanctifying word. Which Jesus said in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. If the word is not a sanctifying word to me, it's a word in vain. Okay. Let's, let's turn over and look at that. I know we've talked about this a little, but apparently not enough. Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctification only comes through the truth. Why? Because sanctification is something God is doing and he only works in truth. Psalms 33, 4 tells us that. Sanctification is not us performing, it's us surrendering and allowing him to perform through us through our obedience to the word of God. Amen. That's sanctification. For God to sanctify anything, and you find this all throughout the Old Testament, for, them, for God to sanctify anything means he was setting it apart for his will and his purpose. And that's what happened to me and you at Calvary. 
He, he saved us by the blood. He set us apart. He, he sanctified us. He set us apart for his purpose, his will, not our purpose and our will. Sanctification is all about God taking something or someone and setting them apart from everything else and using them for his glory, his purpose, his will. I mean, not a denomination, not even an in individual. Sanctification is God working in the life of a believer that, he, that, that his fruit might be seen. Because it's not about Curtis. It's, I'm just blessed that God would live in me and that God would ha, you know, love me and, and take care of me. But the glory is his. Last week I began to sing this new song in my heart. Your word, your will, your way, your glory. Your cross, your blood, my redemption story. It's your word. It's your will. It's your way. It's your glory. It was your cross. It's your blood. But it's my redemption story. It's mine. And God won't take it and you can't take it either. The devil can't take it. It's mine. But it's a sanctifying walk. He, he saved us. He sanctified us to teach us how to be sanctified, how to live it. And here in 1 Thessalonians, we see sanctification is knowing how to possess your vessel. That means knowing how to live in this life till you get to be with him in heaven. And we come back to this earth. That's what sanctification is. God sanctifying you, and he did it through the death of his son and your faith in that. He sanctified you there, and he set you apart for his purpose, his will, his glory. Amen. So we see here in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if the word of God is in truth, it will sanctify. The Word of God is truth, but for it to have an effect on me, it's got to be the sanctifying truth. And this tells me my faith has to be right. Hebrews 13, 12. If we can put that up there and let everybody see that tonight. Hebrews 13, 12. I want to roll over here and look at it in my Bible. I love my Bible. I love Jesus more than my Bible, but I love my Bible. There ain't no power in this book. There ain't no power in this old leather-bound paper inked up book here. But the power is in the one who spoke it. The power is in the one who said it. Hebrews 13, 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Now, now, now it looks like we've got a contradiction on our hands, folks. It looks like, Jesus said we're sanctified by, through the truth and the words of truth, but here the Bible tells us we're sanctified by the blood. This is something very powerful we need to see here tonight. And we need to leave with a hold on what we're about to learn tonight, that the word of God is always in the context of the blood. Or it's without power. It's without power. That's why when they say, you ain't got to preach every message about the cross. You, you hadn't got to pull the cross in to everything. I say, oh, yes, I do. It is the power of God. I said, I'm a Bible believer. I don't care if we're preaching and teaching on how to train up our children in the way they should go or the baptism of the Holy Spirit or how we ought to love our wives or how our wives ought to be submissive to their own husband and, and we ought to submit to each other, the Bible teaches. It don't matter what we're teaching. If it's tithing, giving, it don't matter what it is. It better be tied to Calvary or you'll leave without anything. You ain't getting nothing but maybe a testimony say, well, that was a good service today and that's mostly all the church has got going just words on the way out the door man that was a good message today well it didn't do anything for them if it ain't tied to the cross many Christians you want to you want to say what I'm saying to anybody out there who's saved and they just look at you like you crazy they'll think no it ain't it ain't it ain't that narrow is what they're thinking y'all just trying to bring every scripture and make it about the cross thank you Thank you. Before God did anything, he laid the foundation of the slain lamb. His son would give his life before he did anything. That was the first thing God did. 
And the last thing he'll do is going to be based on the first thing he did. Mm. Now, we, we together on this here. We're sanctified by the truth, the word of God, but our faith must reside in the cross, the blood that was shed, so the word of God will have an effect on our life, a changing effect, because we can't be changed without a daily cross. I love it when the Lord increases our knowledge of truth and causes us to remember things that we've taught through the years, such as there can be 10,000 sermons, but the message in every sermon must be the cross. I don't care what our mamas and daddies think. I don't care what our, our kids, I don't care what our cousins and uncles and other Christian folks, I don't care what they think. I know what God thinks. He's told us what he thought right here. Amen. His word is what he thinks, and I want to go with what he thinks. His thoughts are so much higher than ours, so high as the heavens are above the earth. But you know what? We might not know everything, but we know enough to be saved and to live saved a sanctified life that's pleasing to God. We know enough. I don't have to know when he's coming. Oh, we'd like to. That's a given. I don't have to know when we're coming back with him. That's a given. What's not given is if you'll surrender and let God be God in you. That's not a given. Mm. so we've learned tonight and we're learning even more that before the word of God can sanctify us before it can be a sanctifying word for me to change me and conform me into the image of his death before it can change me and mature me it must be concerning the cross my faith must be in the cross there's no sanctification without the truth, and there's no sanctification without the blood. So sanctification, the proof is in this, that he sanctified us by the blood. The Bible says that we're justified by the blood. In Romans 5 and 1, in Romans 5 and 9, it says we're justified by the blood. Verse 1, we're justified by faith. Verse 9, we're justified by the blood. Well, here's another one of the things. Which is it? Both, faith and the blood. Just, but the Bible also says, and I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I don't know where it's at, but it says we're justified in his name. Well, think about that. If it's the blood that justifies us, what Jesus did at Calvary, but it's also his name that justifies us. That, that tells us that what we've been saying for years, Brother Swagger's been saying for years is his name, who he is, is what he did, and what he did is who he is. The Bible bears it out. The Bible bears it out. We're not making stuff up to try to sound different. It's always been here. We just hadn't got into it because we wanted it to be about us. And sanctification ain't about us and our will. It's about us being in God's will. Amen, Brother Curtis. Man, I want to try to reach two more scriptures. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20, I want us to see this tonight. And I told you last time I ministered to you, this is one of the most sanctifying scriptures or scriptures you could use to try to, uh, to, to, to let God show us a little bit more about this sanctification. Galatians 2.20 and, and 21, 20 speak of our justification. 20, 21 speaks of our sanctification. Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, justified. Your faith in the cross justified you. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me now. Sanctification is Christ living in you. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. See, do you see how many times this scripture is talking about Jesus? Let's just look at that tonight, right here in verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, there's one. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Four times in that one verse. The Apostle Paul had the right revelation from God about Jesus. That's all he talked about, Jesus. He might have been given instruction about how to have order in the service from answering letters and questions they had. But when it came time to preach, he preached the cross. 
He might give a instruction to men and women about how to treat each other and, and to pray each, for each other and how to submit to each other. But when it came time to minister the word of God, he preached the cross. For there's no power without it. So the people of God could have a place to put their faith that it could stand in the power of God and not in the wisdom and religion of men. We're a blessed people tonight. I just, I just, I don't even know how we sleep at night. I really don't know how we sleep at night. This is, this is better than anything we could all drum up and make up. That's, that's our justification. That's what happened that justified us. He, he died for us. We were crucified with him. We've been with him ever since the cross. Let's say it a better way. He's been with us ever since the cross. But verse 21, look at this. This is sanctification. Paul writes this to the church in Galatia. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Now he's all, he says, I'm already saved. I'm crucified with Christ. It's Christ living in me. Life I'm living now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He said, I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God. Let's stop right there and make sure we understand something about that word frustrate. I've told you before, but we ain't got it good enough yet. Frustrate does not mean I'm frustrated that truck pulled out in front of me. That is not what that word means. That's not what that word means. You look it up tonight when you get home. That word frustrate means to reject or to deny. To reject, I don't want it. To deny, I'm not going that way. He says, I'm not going to deny or reject the grace of God. That means what God wants to do in my life. What God wants to do in my life, that's grace. Grace is God at work. I'm not going to deny. I'm not going to reject what God wants to do in my life. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Do you see how he brings his death in right at the end of that? What his faith is really in is the death. He said, Christ, his death ain't in vain for me. It might be in vain for you, but it ain't in vain for me. And I'm not going back under the law and under that righteousness that's only man's. And God says it stinks before him like nasty, dirty rags. But I'm going to put my faith in the one that died for me and I'm getting his righteousness. I want his righteousness. He's my representative. I hadn't got anything to offer God except what Christ has done for me. I don't have one thing to say, look what I did, God. All I can say, God, is thank you for what your son did for me. That's what makes the difference between the great white throne and the judgment seat of Christ. All about what they did. The judgment seat of Christ is all about what Jesus did for us. Do you see the justification and the sanctification? Because as soon as you're born again, there comes every opportunity you'll, you'll have each day, many, to deny the grace of God, to frustrate it, to say, I, I'm not going that way. That's what the church has done. That's why they're not in the sanctification process. They, they don't even know when the preacher tells a lie. They shouting him down. How do I know? Because I used to be there. I don't just speak. I, but I speak from experience. Shouting the preacher down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God ain't even there. He's not doing anything. He's not in any of that because they're not preaching the cross. And people would say, well, you don't have to preach the cross. Yes, you do. I'm not getting in that sinking boat. That's what got the church in the problem in the mess it's in today. Somebody showed up years ago and said, brother, you know, I, I won't give a check to the church. Gave a big old check to the church, huge check to the church. And then two or three weeks later, he Kind of mold his, moseyed his way around the preacher and befriended him. And, you know, he got to talking to him, made friends with him, and said, you know what, there's more than the cross. That money got a little power behind it, you hear? If you ain't careful, if you don't know who you're following, money will carry you away. That's what got the church in the mess it's in. Preachers who did know the truth, they either died and the other folk didn't keep carrying it, or the ones who were carrying it stopped carrying this message because they started carrying something else. It wasn't no good for God's people. Amen. Let's look at one last scripture tonight, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're talking about being sanctified. What is sanctification? It's you being set apart for the will of God, the work of God. Are you in it? Are you in it? People who say, well, I ain't got to go to church, I ain't got to give, I ain't got, no, you ain't got to go to heaven, you ain't got to do nothing. 
And those are all factual statements, the devil. The devil's got more people living by facts than are living by the truth. Because you hear, I hear more of that than I do the truth. Well, you ain't got to go to church to go to heaven. You ain't got to give your money to go to heaven. You ain't got... Second Corinthians chapter 4. I don't want to get hung up on any of that. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For all things are for your sakes. My goodness. I don't know how we sleep at night. That the abundant grace, that means what God wants to do in your life is abundant. Oh, it ain't little. We need to wake up from this mindset, well, I wish God would do more in my life. I'm telling you, he's trying. He wants to do more than you want him to do. For all things are for your sakes. We might as well just leave now and shout all the way home about that right there. All things are for your sake. Everything Jesus did was for us. Hallelujah. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we think not. Now there's a little edification in that. Because I know what Jesus did was for everybody. I'm not going to grow weary and faint. I'm going to stay the course. You know what happens when you stay the course? When you just keep beating the path? When you keep posting scripture on Facebook? When you just keep showing up to church? When you just keep sharing the word? Other people are affected. You have an effect on people. And Paul knows it. He says, for which cause we faint not. I ain't fainting. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep posting scripture every morning at 6 o'clock. I'm going to keep posting scripture on my lunch break. I'm going to go home that night and I'm going to give some more truth to God's people. And on Sunday morning and Wednesday night, I'm going to be here praising God and worshiping God and preaching the gospel. And on Monday night, I'm going to be here with a group of people crying out to this God who still hears his people. I'm not going to faint. I'm going to keep running. You keep running. Watch how many start running. You, you, every time you slow down, somebody notices it. Every time you start slacking, somebody notices it. And it affects them negatively. God asked me something about five, six years ago. Well, more than that. Probably about 10 or 12 years ago. He said, what if every Christian was like you? Woo! What if every Christian on the planet was like you? Uh, it wasn't a positive statement, you see. <laughs> it scared me. I thought, Lord, I need you. I need to. I, I, I thought, I, I, my first thought was, I need to be doing more. But then I thought, how can I need you? That's my ultimate, I need you. For which cause we faint not, but through our, though our outward man is perishing, he wants to quit. The outward man is getting old and tired and fragile. He wants to quit. What does Brother Swaggart say? Bunions, balls, and bruises, and all kind of stuff. You know what? The, old, the outward man is perishing, but look at what God says. I like what God says. Though the outward man perish. yet the inward man is renewed day by day. I don't know how we sleep at night. Knowing when we wake up in the morning, we're going to be brand new all over again. There ain't no aging to that inner man. That outward man's dying. You look in the mirror, you can see it. You don't believe it? Get a year back from 30 years ago and see what you used to look like. You dying. But it ain't you that's dying. It's only your flesh. And it's going to ultimately be dead and dirt again, but you going on with Jesus. For which cause we faint not. My man. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, God says what you're going through ain't but a blink of the eye. It ain't but for a moment, and it's working for you. It's working for you. Your hard time, get up and quit crying. It's working for you. Get up and quit whining. It's working for you. A far more exceeding, what does it say? Eternal weight of glory. But verse 18 tells us when it's working for us. While we look, not at. When's it working that way? While we look, not at the things which are seen. 
You can tell the ones who keep looking at the things which are seen, they just keep whining. <laughs> and we're going to be broken. We're going to be hurt. We're going to be up here and down. And we're going to need prayer. And we're going to need help. But when we're going to get it, we're going to get up. And we're going to move on. Some Christians been whining 40 years because they just looking at the things that are temporary instead of the things that are unseen. Let's look at it together again. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Oh, it seemed like it's been going on 40 years. God said it ain't but a moment. Because he's looking at everything as a whole. And we need to learn to do that too, even though it's hard. That is hard. Because when you're in the middle of a storm, oh, it seems like it's forever. Y'all all know about storms, don't you? And I ain't talking about them st kind that blow over. I'm talking about them kind that blow through. For our light affliction is but for a moment, and it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Our focus is on what's eternal, our Savior, our new man, our, our heavenly abode. That's what we're looking at. The Bible says two places in the New Testament it talks about, but we see Jesus or looking unto Jesus. Both of those refer to his death. But we see Jesus made a little lower than the angels for death. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy of the world, for the joy of of the world, he, he endured the death. You see, what we look at is what Christ provided. It's the unseen. But as long as we keep looking at what Christ did, where is it? I can't see it. You only gonna see it by faith. But when you see it by faith, you're gonna get up and move out. We just if we just want to sit around and whine about everything we see and everything, everybody's doing nothing. They talking bad about me. That's all they never do is talk bad about me. And my whole life's been a mess. You ain't met Jesus then. Because he's going to clean you up. He's going to cause all that mess to be erased and gone. Amen. Pains and hurts for, for all this life. Who can imagine that? Man, the Lord, he's offering so much to us in this sanctification process where we know how to walk, know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. The Bible says that's where we abound more and more, not outside of that, only in that because that's what God is in. And if he's in anything, he's blessing. If he's in anything, he's comforting, he's strengthening, he is causing us to endure. If he's in it, you can't lose for winning. This, isn't, this is one of those sanctifying scriptures. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith to keep looking at what's not seen. Because every time we stop and start looking at what we can see, we start bickering among ourselves. We, we start being competitive. We start judging ourselves among ourselves, which God says is not wise. But as long as we keep looking to King Jesus, we'll just keep singing, long as I got King Jesus, hey, <laughs> I don't need nobody else. If you keep looking at him, you're going to keep seeing him in a way that tells you, shows you, you don't need nothing else. But it's when you start looking at all the government, all this pub, uh, uh, politics and all this mess that the devil is the God of. Sanctification stops. I shared in DeRitter, and it kind of shocked them like it shocked you from last Wednesday night when the Lord revealed to us that wrestling with, with God is not a part of our sanctification. Wrestling with God is called, according to the Bible, God resisting our pride. Wrestling with God is not a part of the sanctification process. Faith in what Christ did starts that process. That's what started it, and that's all that keeps it going. Faith in the truth, which is the word of God, through your faith in the cross, the blood. Without that, it's not working for you. It's not working for you. It's you doing everything. When Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, burdened down, beat up, and smacked over, and trying to get to God, there ain't no way you're going to do it. You just tow up. 
come to me, I'll give you rest. The only place you can find rest is in Christ. And in Christ, that rest is the only place God is sanctified. Remember what we learned about Genesis 2, 2, and 3. After God had created all that he had made, he rested in the seventh day. And that seventh day, he blessed and sanctified it because in it, he had rested from all his works. Sanctification only exists while we rest with our faith in what Christ finished for us. That's where the blessing is. That's where the sanctification is. That's where everything is. In our rest, our trust in Christ and what he did at Calvary. Y'all ain't going to be able to sleep a wink tonight. Your right foot just going to be beating under them covers down there. My Lord, I'm happy. My Lord, we're blessed. He did it all for me. He's going to watch over me while I'm sleeping. He's going to be with me when I wake up tomorrow. He's going to open doors for me to minister. And guess what I get to do tomorrow? I get to follow him one more day. And, and the devil says, yeah, but you got to have a cross to follow him. And I'm going to say, I don't have to. I get to. Glory to God. I don't have to do anything. I get to do everything. Sanctification is a process God has given us as a gift because only in that process can we be like the one we're singing and telling him we want to be just like you. How much of the church all over the world says, I want to be like you, but they don't have a clue about sanctification. This is going to be a wild but a good year this year. This is going to be a wild year of revelation. It's going to be a tremendous year this year of revelation. I'm telling you prophetically tonight, this is going to be a year that many are going to come out of the dead. They're going to come out of, pro, uh, uh, of prostitution. The devil's got most of the church out there just playing like prostitutes, selling themselves to the devil. This is going to be a tremendous year. Just look at what God's teaching us. He hadn't secluded it to us. He wants the world to hear it. He wants the world to know it. He wants his people to rise up out of that slumber they've been in for so many years. Because he can't produce fruit in us without our faith in the cross. It takes faith in the truth for God to work. But if God's working, there's fruit of his work. And that fruit is holiness. Because if he's working, if he's allowed to work in us, that's the sanctifying process going on. Because remember, sanctification is what God is doing for his glory, his purpose, his will. It's not a hard thing for us. It, we give him everything heavy that comes along. Every bump in the road, I say, that's yours, Lord. That's your bump. I'm following you. You know what? If you're following Jesus... Don't you think if something pops up in the road, he's going to kick it out the way for you? If you're following Jesus, the devil's terrified of you. The sanctification process is what teaches the children of God what the backside of the devil looks like. Well, I need to say that again. The process that we so avoid and so desperately try to push away taking up a cross following Jesus being sanctified being conformed in his image the image of his death all the, where the blessings are we, we, we sometimes try to avoid that so much and we don't know we're avoiding the blessings because only in that can we abound and God wants us to abound more and more amen stand with me tonight praise God Lord, we love you tonight. We praise your holy name tonight. We need you tonight, Lord. We thank you for your truth, for your word, for your blood you shed at Calvary. For becoming our sanctification on the cross. As you set yourself apart to do the will of your Father. Because you did. Now we call... Your Father, our Father. Our Heavenly Father. Because you set yourself apart. You sanctified yourself that we might be sanctified and set apart. And now we cry out, Abba, Father. Oh, our Father who art in heaven, who loves us. 
as much as he loves Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, who's given us opportunity after opportunity just to let him be God. Our Father who art in heaven, who places daily bread on the table, even in the midst of our enemy, leads us beside still waters and causes us to surely lay down in green pastures. And all the days of our life, we turn around and we see that surely your goodness and your mercy is following us. We bless your name tonight, oh God. We thank you tonight for what you've done, what you've accomplished for your purpose, your will, your way. We thank you for choosing us, Lord. Not being ashamed to call us people who sometimes, Lord, can be so hard-headed, stubborn, rebellious. Your people. For what you see is a people that you've blessed. You see a blessed people because you see your son Jesus. Lord, we praise you tonight for this process, this great salvation that didn't just start something and then run away. It started to keep working every day. You moved in to dwell each and every day. The promise of your covenant, you said, was not only to dwell in us, but to walk in us. And Lord, I pray that we would experience that, that we would all, every person in this room, every person that hears this message would just fall before you and say, God, I don't want to make a mess anymore. I'm tired of trying to do everything myself. I can't do anything without you. I'm trusting in what you've accomplished for me and what you did to represent me on that cross. I've come to the conclusion that only through my faith in that will I be able to represent you. Will I be able to move forward, walk, run this race? Lord, keep us near the cross. Keep us near the cross. Let us not turn and walk away though our flesh be upset, our flesh be mad or jealous or whatever, Lord God. May we continually look to you all the days of our life may we hunger and thirst for your righteousness that we might be filled Lord I'm asking you to use this ministry to reach far and wide all over the world Lord God that this truth would penetrate the hearts and lives of your people and those who don't know you yet we thank you tonight for the word of the Lord We thank you tonight for the Spirit of the Lord that teaches us, imparts the truth into our believing hearts. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you need prayer tonight, I want you to come to this altar. Come on up here if you need prayer tonight. We want to pray with you. We want to believe God with you. It don't matter what it is. It don't matter what it is. Hallelujah. Now Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me as I pray. Take all my gifts away. 
ever touched anybody and they limped away I can't find it where Jesus healed one leg and left the other leg crippled if Jesus touches somebody they gonna be whole I don't care if they're five or 105 years old oh that's a poem ain't it if he touches you let me say it this way if you touch him all you gotta do is touch him by faith he loves you tonight this process this road this way of sanctification is not hard he took care of it at Calvary he took care of the hard part at Calvary that was the hard part our way is just to follow him did you hear me tonight he took care of the hard part he did the hard thing now we just we just get to fight a good fight that you can't lose if you keep fighting how amazing if you just keep fighting you can't lose but you got to fight which means you got to keep believing hallelujah we're blessed I hope you do get rest tonight I hope you are able to sleep but you have heard something that will keep you awake Lord we love you tonight we thank you for what you're doing through the word what you're doing by teaching us Lord may we not come become puffed up by what we're being taught God May we humble ourselves that we might find that multiplied grace you desire to pour into our lives. Use us all, Lord. Use us all, Lord, for your glory. As we leave this place tonight, oh God, we just ask that everything in our lives would be according to your word, that our faith might be real, might be legitimate, and that we might find ourselves through faith in the blood in this sanctified process. In the name of Jesus, everybody.